there's an epidemic going on around the world and in the United States. And I'm not talking about some sort of virus. I'm not talking about COVID. It's a silent epidemic that affects 30% of Americans or one out of every 10 people. This is a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver or N-A-L- NAFL. Now, now, there's several different types of fatty liver. As the name implies, what fatty liver refers to is an excessive accumulation of fat in the liver, which really definitely interferes with liver function. Uh, it can cause a couple of liver, pro- liver problems, which I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a minute. But there are different types of uh, fatty uh, uh, liver. Uh, in the past, the most common type of uh, fatty liver had to do with uh, alcoholics. It was called alcoholic fatty liver. And uh, this was um, this occurred because uh, the excessive intake of alcohol, uh, what happened is the, bo- the liver couldn't process the fat that resulted from this increased intake of alcohol and fat accumulated in the liver. And uh, with the accumulation of fat in the liver, that was the first stage. Then you would move on to uh, scar tissue forming the liver. That's called liver cirrhosis. Uh, liver cirrhosis uh, basically could lead to uh, possible liver failure or liver cancer. Uh, in more recent years, now the alcohol-related liver disease still exists, of course, in heavy alcoholics, but the more, more, far more common type of fatty liver is called non-alcoholic-related fatty liver, or NAFLD. Uh, there is a third type that's much rarer. It's a uh, occurs during pregnancy in the third trimester, or uh, of pregnancy. Some women get a, uh, a, fa- a, a, a accumulation of fat in the liver. It's called the fatty liver of pregnancy. But uh, what I want to focus on here is non-alcoholic fatty liver because it's so common. See, it doesn't give you any overt symptoms. It can show up if you have certain medical tests like a, uh, a, a uh, ultrasound, it can show up. Uh, it, it could also be, a, it, it, certain lab tests could be indicative of having fatty liver, such as um, certain lab tests for liver enzymes. Fatty liver will sometimes elevate certain liver enzymes is another indication. But other than that, uh, you can walk around and not even know you have fatty liver and it's silently you know, hurting your liver possibly leaving, leaving, even leading to liver failure. Uh, so that's the real insidious thing about uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver is that you don't really feel anything. Uh, now, the liver, of course, is a very important organ. It's the main detoxifying organ in the body. Uh, there's over 10,000 reactions an hour or a minute, I can't remember exactly which, that occur in the liver. Uh, the liver is, uh, if the liver fails completely, uh, it's incompatible with life because things like protein, which of course normally is a healthy nutrient, uh, the liver helps degrade protein. Uh, it, for, it converts, for example, it converts uh, protein, it breaks down the, uh, uh, the, uh, the amino acids from protein. Uh, some of it's oxidized, some of the amino acids are converted into, uh, the nitrogen portion is excreted in the liver, the nitrogen portion of uh, protein, and then you have uh, some of the protein, uh, the uh, amino acids are converted to a substance called urea, which is excreted from the kidneys. Now, if the liver is not working right, some of these toxins from, uh, from uh, protein can accumulate. Uh, at certain amino acids uh, can be converted into um, ammonia uh, if, it, if the liver is not working properly, and the ammonia could travel to the brain and put you in a coma. So, you know, that's just one example of, of how important the liver is. It's a, again, it's a vein detoxifying organ. Uh, everything you eat, everything you take in orally, go, goes first to the liver in a, in a um, process called first pass metabolism, uh, where the liver will process it. In fact, uh, this is the reason why most forms of testosterone, straight testosterone, are not very useful because they're if you take, let's say, a, a testosterone pill, it's tra- immediately sent to the liver, and in the first pass metabolism, most of it's degraded, and that's what led to the uh, to the development of, of uh, testosterone drugs that 
for example, injectable forms of testosterone that bypass the liver initially. And then, of course, you have the oral anabolic steroids, which are structurally designed to resist the premature breakdown that would normally occur in the liver. Uh, now, the, uh, as far as managing non-alcoholic fa fatty liver, uh, by the way, fatty liver is also associated with insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Uh, you can have fatty liver. You don't necessarily have to be obese or have a lot of body fat to have fatty liver. Some people who are relatively thin or lean could also have fatty liver, uh, even if they don't have a lot of excess, let's say, superficial body fat because of their diet uh, and the way they eat. Uh, I'll give you one example of that. Uh, let's say a person is eating a lot of foods that contain high fructose, high fructose corn syrup or, or uh, just a lot of fructose itself. Uh, now I'm, not, I'm not talking about the fructose in fruit because the fiber in fruit kind of neutralizes the fructose that's found naturally in fruit. But if you, let's say, for some reason you're eating like several pounds a day of fruit and you're getting a lot of fructose, fructose is rapidly converted, excess fructose, I should say, is rapidly converted into triglyceride, which is fat in the liver. So uh, all other sugars in excess can also be converted into fat in the liver. Uh, if for some reason you're not getting certain nutrients, for example, uh, there's an amino acid, an essential amino acid called methionine. Uh, you have uh, methionine, uh, my vitamin B12, folic acid. Uh, all of these things produce what they call methyl groups. I don't want to get into complex biochemistry, but let's put it this way. Methyl groups help your liver process fat and prevent the accumulation of fat in your liver. Uh, uh, there's a uh, body of research that shows that animals that are either deprived of methionine or or are provided with diets that include very little methionine, they live a longer life, sometimes up to 30% longer than other animals. They think the reason is that methionine could be converted into a toxic byproduct called homocysteine which causes a number of serious health problems, including possibly cardiovascular disease and degenerative brain disease. But if you eliminate methionine in humans, you will probably get fatty liver pretty fast. And methionine is found in all high-quality protein foods, meat, fish, eggs. So it's not something you have to worry about, but I'm just saying that's one of the things that methionine does. By the way, methionine is also a precursor for creatine synthesis in the body. So uh, you, the type of diet you want to follow to help prevent fatty liver is low in processed carbohydrates, such as high fructose corn syrup, not the natural fructose found in whole fruit, because that, again, the fiber helps neutralize any negative effects of fructose that's found in fruit. Uh, fruit juice is another story. If you drink too much fruit juice, you probably would be getting a little bit too much fruct fructose, which puts you at a greater risk for fatty liver. Of course, candy and all those processed carb foods, uh, those things are all uh, are risk factors for f developing fatty liver. Uh, if you're sedentary, if you don't exercise, <clears throat> when you exercise, the, uh, it helps to the liver to break down the fat that might develop in the liver. So if you're very sedentary, if, you, if your main activity is just to watch movies on Netflix, never go to the gym, never run, never do any type of exercise, you could be very thin and still have fatty liver because the fat will accumulate in your liver, especially if you're also following a bad diet. So uh, are there certain, um, again, natural unprocessed foods, uh, fiber also is very helpful for prevent, preventing uh, fatty liver, <coughs> protein, uh, a good uh, type of diet overall diet that's very good for helping prevent fatty liver. It's called the Mediterranean diet. It's, a, it's a basically largely plant-based foods, but it does include small amounts of chicken, meat, fish, that type of thing. Uh, and and it's a, it contains a large variety of foods. It even, it even allows a, a little bit of red wine. Uh, it, it emphasizes extra virgin olive oil, which is very good. Extra virgin olive oil, by the way, also good for helping to prevent uh, non-alcohol, I mean, non-alcoholic fatty liver. So the Mediterranean diet is a, a good overall diet that will definitely help prevent fatty liver. 
Um, there are certain foods and supplements that can also be very useful in helping either to prevent or treat existing fatty liver. One example of this is garlic. There was a 2022 review that found that garlic suppl supplements had a positive effect on people who had non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, another good uh, nutritional supplement or nutrient that is very good for um, uh, uh, helping to prevent fatty liver and helping to reduce fatty liver are omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, the um, the omega-3 fatty acids are found in fatty fish, f uh, such as salmon, heart, sardines, uh, certain forms of omega-3, uh, a certain form called alpha-linoleic acid is found in foods like walnuts and flaxseed. However, the uh, alpha-linoleic acid is a precursor for the far more bioactive forms of omega-3, which is EPA and DHA. And really for health, uh, rather than depend on the precursor alpha-linoleic acid, which only has about as uh, maybe 5 to 10% conversion into EPA, DHA, it's far better to go to the preformed sources of, uh, of bioactive omega-3, which would be either fish oil supplements or fatty fish. Uh, you want to eat fatty, if you go with the fatty fish route, you want to have it uh, at least three fatty fish meals a week. They've done some studies where they've shown that two fatty, uh, two, uh, two, two meals of, of uh, fatty fish that contain omega-3, uh, eating it twice a week is not enough to bring up the uh, level of what they call the omega-3 index. It's not enough to bring it up to uh, optimal levels. So if you're going to go the fatty fish route, you've got to ta take in three fatty fish meals a week. They don't have to be three days in a row as long as it's about three days a week. Coffee, believe it or not, is very good for treating or preventing a non-alcoholic fatty liver. There was a 2020 meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is a compilation of past studies which allow you to come to a, a, a conclusion as to whether any particular treatment is of any use. Anyway, this 2020 meta-analysis found that regular coffee consumption is significantly associated with a decreased risk of liver fibrosis, that's cirrhosis, that can occur in people with uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver. Now, what this means in practical terms is if you already have non-alcoholic fatty liver or you're starting to develop it, if you drink coffee, it'll, it'll, it'll have a, a huge effect in preventing the uh, non-alcoholic or the fat accumulation to uh, cause a, the uh, conversion of liver tissue into scar tissue or cirrhosis. So coffee helps to prevent that. Uh, the ideal amount of coffee to drink each day is up to four six ounce cups a day. That'll give you the right amount of, uh, of, uh, of uh, coffee to, uh, for health purposes. The elements in coffee that are protective are called polyphenols and caffeine itself offers a, a lot of, pro of, uh, of uh, protective effects. So um, so that so coffee helps again to prevent the liver cirrhosis, which is a complication of fatty liver. As far as specific foods, broccoli, eating large amounts of whole vegetables, very good for people with fatty liver disease, because uh, too much fat is not good uh, if you have fatty liver, especially saturated fat. Uh, e even the other kinds of fat are uh, other than omega three fat. Uh, and the olive oil uh, fat are not really great if you already have non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, but broccoli, for example, is a cruciferous vegetable. It's excellent for people that uh, have a non-alcoholic fatty liver. There was a 2022 animal study published in the Journal of Functional Foods that uh, they, they found that uh, when they gave broccoli to mice with, uh, who had non-alcoholic fatty liver, uh, the broccoli helped the, uh, to break down the fat accumulation much faster th than usual than mice that didn't eat broccoli, I should say. So broccoli would be very good. Any type of cruciferous vegetable, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, very good for uh, treating and helping the uh, liver get rid of excess fat. Green tea also has a, um, uh, has, is loaded with antioxidants, one of the main ones being something called EGCG. Uh, these things are, uh, green tea is very beneficial to the liver. However, I should point out there is a certain, uh, uh, let's say, gene mutation certain people have where when they take concentrated forms of green tea, 
such as green tea extract supplements, if they take too many of them, uh, it can actually have a reverse effect and can cause liver damage. This has happened to some people who use fat burner supplements that contain large amounts of green tea. This mainly applies to isolated green tea extract supplements, not the green tea that you drink. Uh, you'd have to have something like 15 cups a day of, uh, of green tea to have uh, to begin to encounter any problems. People in Asian countries often drink up to eight or nine cups of green tea a day. It does nothing but provide health benefits. Uh, the, again, the, the active components in green tea are mainly anti, various powerful antioxidants. So uh, also, if you take the green tea extract supplement, if you take it with food, it seems to minimize any of the possible liver-based side effects associated with, with green tea supplements. So those green tea supplements in large doses are mainly a problem when you take them isolated away from any type of food. Uh, walnuts, again, uh, walnuts are high in, uh, in, in the precursor for omega-3. Uh, some studies show that walnuts are very good for people with non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, there was a, uh, a, a recent study uh, in 2023 in the journal Nutrients that found the significant intake between the intake of various kinds of nuts including walnuts, and a reduced risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver. As far as protein supplements, soy or whey protein, a 2019 review, again in the journal Nutrients, found that soy and whey protein were able to reduce the fat buildup that can occur in the liver. Very good news for a lot of bodybuilders and fitness advocates who use, uh, let's say, whey proteins. It actually helps to prevent fatty liver. Uh, there was this, uh, one study uh, showed that liver fat decreased by 20% in women who, who are obese who consume 60 grams of whey protein every day for four weeks. The active ingredients in soy protein that helped uh, to uh, you know prevent fatty liver or treat it are, 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 are uh, isoflavones, uh, which are types of antioxidants uh, that antioxidants that also uh, help uh, to treat or prevent fatty liver. <clears throat> uh, interestingly enough, testosterone itself, uh, people wonder about anabolic steroids. Uh, there's a rare uh, condition where um, anabolic steroids, there's a, um, there's a condition called, it's called toxicant-associated fatty liver. Uh, and, uh, this can occur in, in people who use high doses of anabolic steroids, like a lot of professional bodybuilders, uh, it's not that prevalent. It, it's um, the, the users show a rate of over 12 percent, or a six-fold increase in risk, even though they were young and didn't have other problems such as insulin resistance. So, so that, that's a, a uh, that's a, a rare side effect of large doses of steroids. It could cause a form of a fatty liver. However, uh, it's also notable that straight testosterone seems to improve fatty liver. It helps the liver get rid of fat. So this is good news for, let's say, men, older men who are on testosterone replacement therapy. Uh, turns out that testosterone actually helps to, uh, it actually has a real effect in helping to reduce the formation of excess fat in the liver. Uh, as I mentioned, there's certain foods to, to avoid, sugar, added sugar. Uh, sugar is, is probably the worst thing single worst thing you can eat to, uh, in relation to fatty liver. An excess of sugar will, uh, like I say, will cause an accumulation of fat in the liver even in otherwise lean people. Alcohol, uh, I mentioned earlier, alcoholic fatty liver was very common, still common, uh, because uh, the uh, excessive intake of alcohol causes the acc accumulation of fat in the liver. You want to avoid refined grains like white bread, white pasta, white rice, uh, these things, again, uh, are associated with fatty liver. Uh, and there was a 2022 review that, uh, that looked at 73 adults who had uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver. The study found that those who consumed fewer refined grains had a lower risk of the metabolic syndrome, which is a group of risk factors associated with the onset of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, uh, and other problems. <laughs> uh, so you want to eat whole grain foods, whole wheat, whole grain. Like I say, vegetables are very good. Uh, don't avo avoid fatty foods, like too much fried food, fatty food. 
because uh, they can uh, just eating too much alone of anything will actually promote fatty liver because you overwhelm the liver's ability to process excess calories and it can cause the accumulation of fat in the liver. So, you know, the fatty foods themselves, because of their concentration of uh, calories, are not good. Uh, there, there is some indication that I mentioned earlier, saturated fat, uh, it, it, some studies indicate, can increase the uh, amount of fat that forms over, uh, in organs, including the fatty liver. Uh, you want to avoid fatty, fatty cuts of beef. If you're going to eat the beef, stick with the lean cuts like round and sirloin. Uh, pork is a little bit too high in fat. Daily meats, all high in saturated fats. The, so you want to avoid that. Stick with lean meat, fish, uh, you know, soy foods, that type of thing. Uh, and, of course, the oily fish is very good for, uh, for that. And uh, it, uh, if you uh, go on a diet itself, uh, uh, just just losing a 5% increase in body fat can significantly decrease the amount of fat in a person's liver because what happens is as you start to lose weight, the body will uh, actually use the fat stored in liver as an energy source. So it can, uh, it can help the liver get rid of excess fat. Uh, for a person who has uh, a non-alcoholic fatty liver, has to eat uh, uh, about 1,200 to 1,500 calories a day or reduce their daily calorie intake by 500 to 1,000 calories to see a significant decline or drop in the accumulation of fat in the liver. So um, let's see, what else can I tell you? You want, of course, exercise, very important. You got to do at least 150, 300 mi minutes of moderate aerobic exercise. And you want to also include weight training too. Uh, that that will also go a long way towards treating fatty liver. So, uh, vitamin E, I, I should mention, vitamin E has been shown in some studies to also be useful for uh, helping to treat uh, fatty liver. So, uh, there's much more to say about fatty liver, but I don't want this uh, video to go long, too long. Uh, probably in the near future. I'll be writing a feature on all everything you need to know about non-alcoholic fatty liver because it's an important topic because so many people have it. And like I say, it's very insidious because you don't feel it. It's, it's just happening in your body. It's kind of like hypertension or high blood pressure because you can have high blood pressure and high blood pressure and not notice any overt symptoms. And yet it's causing severe damage to your uh, blood vessel linings and, and your heart. And fatty liver, again, is slowly destroying your liver. So I think it's an important topic. So that for that reason, I'll probably write an in-depth feature on fatty liver. But the general guidelines that I talked about in this video should help a lot uh, for people. Again, if, if you aren't sure whether you have fatty liver, you can go to a uh, lab or go see your doctor and have them do an ultrasound of your abdomen. And uh, if you have fatty liver, and also you, uh, a blood test for the liver enzymes, those will give you good indications of whether you have fatty liver. And then you can heed some of the uh, principles I discussed in this video to reduce the liver fat, or in some cases, completely prevent the, the accumulation of liver fat, fat. So that's about it. Uh, uh, if you want more information about nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, Hormone therapy, supplement science, which supplements work, which ones don't, uh, w women's health and fitness, many more topics are discussed in my Applied Metabolics publication at www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, Applied Metabolics covers more topics than any other digital publication related to nutrition and exercise. It also comes with my over six decades of experience and knowledge that cannot be matched by, to my knowledge, by anybody else. In other words, I was learning about this stuff before most of these other people were even born. And I also keep up the latest research. Applied Metabolics is written in a very easy, understandable form. If there's a technical term used, I, I readily explain it so you don't have to reach for any type of medical dictionary. Uh, if, you've, if you've gone as far as the sixth grade and are literate, you will understand everything in Applied Metabolics. Uh, I, I've been a professional writer for nearly half a century, so I know how to write for the public. Uh, when you subscribe to Applied Med, it's, and by the way, it's about 
anywhere from 30 to uh, 45 pages each month. It's no ads. It's strictly uh, evidence-based knowledge and information, and it's all practical. It's stuff you could use right away. I, I include a lot of training information there so you could avoid some of the mistakes that I made over my, my uh, actually over 60 years of training myself. So, uh, so subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, send me an email. I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and general health and medicine. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only could send me short questions about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics or anything that comes to mind related to nutrition exercise, and I will answer their question as an appreciation of this subscription and also as a bonus uh, of this subscription. Uh, you know, so this is only for current subscribers only. Um, what else can I say? Uh, oh, and if you uh, if you like my if you, if you think these videos are of any use, <coughs> please subscribe. I think there's some sort of subscribe button you can hit. And also, if you like the video, there's a little figure there on, on, on the bottom of this video, a little, you know, plus sign, you hit that. Uh, I think it, uh, w when you do that, it, it makes the video more visible to people as far as I know. It increases what's known as the algorithm. <laughs> I, I really don't know what that means, but apparently it means that the video will be more visible. It'll help me grow this channel. I think it's, uh, I think this information is important for people since a lot of the other videos on YouTube are bogus nonsense that have no basis in fact whatsoever. You know, there a lot of these people are selling products and they're putting out these videos as basically infomercials to sell their products, you know, that that's all they really are. And, and they, they'd be okay if it was accurate information, but more often than not, it's not accurate information. It's all geared to selling what they're selling, period. So, uh, you know, again, let other people know about this channel. I'd appreciate that. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They are the best. Uh, and walking the dog will help prevent fatty liver because any type of exercise will help to reduce the fat in the liver. The worst thing you can do is sit around and not move. You will get fatty liver even if you're even if you weigh 92 pounds. So heed that advice. Move and don't eat junk food for processed sugars and fat. Take care. Thanks for listening.